I just recently added a new credit card to my setup. My two player setup with my wife has ballooned to 18 total credit cards and I'm going to be utilizing both Chase and Hilton points for an upcoming travel redemption that I have in the next year. So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the major changes to my two player setup, what cards I plan to get next, and what my overall credit card roadmap looks like over the next year, and what my long-term credit card strategy is going to look like as well. So to start with, about a month ago, I applied and got approved for the Marriott Bonvoy business card, and there are a couple reasons for why I got this card. The first reason that I got this card is because I was intrigued by the welcome bonus of being able to receive three free night awards valued up to 50,000 points each for a total of 150,000 Marriott points, if you're able to spend $6,000 or more in the first six months of having the card. I'm on team travel, so I love how tangible this welcome bonus is on being able to receive those three free night awards that I plan on using for a travel redemption in the next year or so. Plus, technically, if you maximize each of those three free night awards, you'd get a total of 150,000 Marriott points, which would give you a total value of $1,200, and that is great value to get for this card. Additionally, the Marriott Bonvoy Business Card has an annual fee of $125, but the Bonvoy Business Card is gonna give you a free night award every year just for having the card. And since Marriott points are worth about 0.8 cents per point, the value that you get from that free night certificate would be about $280, which is gonna be more than the annual fee on this card every single year which essentially allows me to use the Bonvoy business card as a keeper card. Finally, the last reason that I got the Marriott Bonvoy business card is because Marriott does have the best global footprint out of any hotel brand. And since I am someone who is on team travel and loves to travel everywhere that I can, including less touristy areas, it was gonna be really important to my overall hotel credit card strategy to have the flexibility to be able to use Marriott points as well. And this brings me into the topic of hotel credit cards because my perspective and therefore my credit card strategy has changed a lot when it comes to hotel credit cards. Before I got the Marriott Bonvoy business, I had three hotel credit cards and they were all Hilton cards, namely the Hilton Honors card, Hilton Surpass card, and Hilton Honors business card. And I have been able to use a significant amount of Hilton points for different trips, including most recently booking my entire honeymoon with Hilton points. And because of that, up to this point, I would consider myself a Hilton loyalist. However, my perspective has changed on this because I understand the argument for being loyal to one specific hotel brand and going for high status and things like that. But I just feel like at least at this stage in my credit card journey, that I'm unnecessarily boxing myself into a specific hotel brand by considering myself a loyalist. And so now I would consider myself to be a hotel card free agent. The whole hotel credit card argument is definitely something I can make a full video on. And I do plan on making that video in the future. But basically, I have three Hilton cards. I just added the Marriott Bonvoy business. And I'll discuss this later in the video. But one of the next cards that I plan on adding is the Chase World of Hyatt card. The reason that I think it can be so valuable to be a hotel card free agent is because I think I can get significant value from Hilton, Marriott, and Hyatt credit cards. And a lot of them can be used as keeper cards within my setup as well. Since a lot of them, I have specific tangible ways to get more value than the fee every single year. As part of my end game credit card strategy, I also think I'll add a card like the ISG Premier card, and then I'm open to adding one high tier luxury hotel card as well, such as the Hilton Aspire card or the Bonvoy Brilliant, or maybe even both. Okay, so I've gone over my most recent addition to my credit card setup and how my perspective has changed on hotel credit cards, but the next important topic that's going to affect my credit card roadmap is going to be my two player setup. Both myself and my wife are 23 years old and we have a combined 18 total credit cards. And I do plan on making a full video later this month going over our entire credit card journey. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that video. So I recently added the Marriott Bonvoy business both for the welcome bonus and to serve as a keeper card within my setup. But my wife has added three new credit cards so far in 2023, which are all credit cards that I do not have in order to optimize our two player credit card strategy. So one of the new credit cards that my wife Lucia added recently was the Built MasterCard. And a huge reason for that is because we did move into a new apartment at the start of August. And so the Built card is going to be what is going to allow us to maximize the value that we get from our rent payments. And then we'll also plan a date night on the first of every month to capitalize on getting 6X back on dining. Since I'm trying to protect my Chase 524 status, it was essential that we picked up the built card to maximize our rent payments, 
but it made the most sense that my wife Lucia got the card so that I could keep my 524 status intact for when I come out of Chase Jail at the end of the year. The next card that Lucia got this year was the Capital One Saver 1, and there's a pretty clear explanation for why she got that card. The reason for that is because the Capital One Saver 1 does not have an annual fee, you'll have the ability to get a Uber One membership, and the welcome bonus is going to give you 20,000 Capital One miles. So not only is she going to use this card to increase the length of your credit history over time, since the card does not have an annual fee, so she'll never have a reason to need to cancel it. But this is also going to start the process of us completing the Capital One Duo when one of us gets the Capital One Venture Rex in the future. Finally, the last credit card that Lucia got this year was the City Custom Cash, which allows you to get 5x back on your top eligible spend category. So long term, we're going to use this card as our dedicated gas station credit card. Ultimately, all three credit cards that Lucia got this year will all be really useful and have specific use cases in our two player setup while keeping my 524 status intact at the same time. Okay, so now in terms of my credit card roadmap and the credit cards that I plan to get next, I've talked about it a couple times in this video already, but I am currently over 524, but I do come out of Chase Jail at the end of November. So I'm really excited to come out of Chase Jail and be able to get Chase credit cards once again. But before I get into the next credit cards that I plan on getting, one of the first things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask for a retention offer on my American Express Gold Card. A retention offer is essentially a mini welcome bonus that is given to you by a credit card issuer to incentivize you to keep that card open for at least another year. From what I've seen, people have been most successful when asking for retention offers on American Express cards in particular, and specific to the American Express Gold Card, I've seen a lot of people get a retention offer similar to 30,000 American Express points, when you spend $4,000 in something like six months or something like that. So the annual fee on my Amex Gold card is set to post in November, around the same time that I'm expected to get out of Chase Jail. And my first priority is I'm going to contact American Express and see what I can do in terms of getting a retention offer on my Amex Gold card. Hypothetically, it'll probably take me, let's just say three to four months to hit the retention offer bonus on the Amex Gold Card. And then after that, my next priority is going to be to get the Chase Inc. Unlimited and Chase Inc. Cash. The reason for that is because first of all, both of the Chase Inc. cards do not have annual fees. So they offer me zero downside and allow me to continue to increase the length of my credit history over time. Then they both have really high welcome bonuses on being able to receive 75,000 Chase points. If you're able to spend $6,000 or more, in the first three months of having the cards. And since they are both business cards, they won't increase my 524 status, which will give me the desired flexibility to continue to get Chase credit cards. And I will be taking advantage of that because while I'm under 524, the next credit card that I plan on getting, which I've had my eyes on for quite a long time, is gonna be my next personal Chase credit card, which is going to be the Chase World of Hyatt card. The reason for that is because the Chase World of Hyatt card is going to serve as a keeper card within my credit card setup because you'll get a category one through four free night award every single year, which is gonna give me something like three times more value than the fee every single year. And as I discussed earlier, when I talked about hotel credit cards, I'm coming to the realization that I wanna be more of a hotel card free agent so that I can get value from having cards within multiple different ecosystems so that I can keep my options open while I'm traveling. Now, in terms of my long-term credit card strategy, there are some cards that I plan to get that aren't necessarily cards that I plan on getting in the next couple months or in the next year, but are going to be cards that are gonna be essential to my long-term end game credit card setup. So one card that I still think is somehow underrated, but is one of the most powerful credit cards out there on the market is the Hilton Aspire card, which gives you a ton of Hilton specific benefits and in my opinion, can easily get you like three times more value than the fee every single year from all the benefits that you get on the card. I've really enjoyed earning Hilton points and then redeeming them for luxury hotel stays. And so I plan on adding the Hilton Aspire card at some time in the next couple of years to serve as my luxury hotel card within my end game credit card setup. Additionally, the Amex Platinum has the most luxury travel benefits out of any credit card out there. And so especially as I continue to travel more often, and see the value in the airport lounge access and the elevated hotel statuses, and then some of those credits as well. I definitely plan on adding the Amex Platinum sometime in the next couple of years as well. Finally, I love talking about what credit cards I'm utilizing, what credit cards we have in our two player credit card setup. 
and then what credit cards I plan on getting in the future. But the last part of my credit card roadmap is going to be how I'm actually utilizing those points. So I'm going to discuss one big travel redemption that I have coming up that does have multiple layers to it. Essentially, I don't have anything set in stone yet or any dates that are specifically locked down, but the plan is to go to Panama and Colombia this winter with my wife, and we do have a couple ways that we're gonna utilize points to make that happen. First off, both Lucia and I do have $400 Alaska flight credits that we got from them losing our bags and then returning it to us a couple days later during our honeymoon, which was unfortunate at the time, but we made the best out of it but we're basically gonna use those $400 flight credits to book round trip flights from Seattle to Houston. And then from Houston, I'm going to use Aeroplan points that I transferred over from Chase, utilizing a 25% transfer bonus. And I'm gonna use those Aeroplan points to book flights from Houston to Panama City. And then from Panama City, we plan to go to Colombia. Not exactly sure which cities we'll go to yet, but most likely it'll be Bogota and Medellin. And I do plan to most likely use Aeroplan points for the flight from Panama to Colombia as well. Once we actually get there, we plan to use Hilton points to stay at the Waldorf Astoria, Panama City for five nights. And then I'll either use more Hilton points or some of the free nights that we get from the Bonvoy Business Welcome Bonus for our stays while we're in Colombia. I do plan to come out with a full video going over that travel redemption as well. So make sure to subscribe down below so that you don't miss me going over exactly how I'm utilizing points to get free or heavily discounted travel. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to go watch this video next, where I break down exactly what's in my wallet and how I'm utilizing my credit card strategy for a pretty insane value. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.